how are you physically using the litter box? Like, it's so gross. That's uncomfortable. Do you have a litter box I can use really quick? Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> I am super excited about this episode of Assumptions because I spent today with Furries was one of the first episodes that got me into interviewing on this channel. And for the longest time, I've wanted to see what it would be like if the furries that I spoke to rather than speaking to me, we're speaking to each other. Yeah, and it turns out most of our assumptions about furries are wrong. I know I was proven wrong, so let's get into it. Furries have difficulty separating real life from fantasy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this might be a hot take, I guess, but some people I think do have a harder time separating it. I keep a lot of my like online social life and then my real life social life completely separate like have a normal nine to five job <laughs> and then at nighttime i'm a, a furry the furries come out at night <laughs> yeah it's like not as a lot of furries do have the problem of like merging the two worlds together i don't think that's healthy you got to go to work you have responsibilities and you know a lot of furries have these high-end jobs where if that boundary were to cross, there could be a lot of issues. I would never tell my coworkers that I like to dress up as a dog, you know? <laughs> like It sounds kind of crazy, it, like, right, yeah. <laughs> with and, no other context. And the worst yeah. part is, I'm a dog trainer. So, like, imagine how they would think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. think of me, you know? I'm a dog trainer that dresses up as a dog yeah. that trains dogs. Right. You know? So, like, I, I, don't, I don't like to tell people, like, outside of my friend group or the fandom what I do, like, mm -hmm. on the weekends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> to me, like, this was just a hobby. It was just me getting to meet people, make, like, funny TikToks, and then the next morning wake up at 8 to go to class, you know? And, yeah. like, I have to worry about school. I have to worry about, like my job, like taxes, you know, all the adult stuff. So it's like, in a sense, like I do agree with you that it's like, you know, maybe not the best idea to kind of live completely as like, you know, in this fandom. Cause like, I don't want people to think that this is all that I do. Like I just, every second that I'm home, I'm dressed up as like a wolf, you know? <laughs> like I'm, I'm literally just probably watching Netflix or doing anything else that other people are doing. So there's definitely a separation there for me. Yeah. Furries, they're always starting drama online. The furries specifically, the, you probably get this in any group of people, right? But the ones who are like chronically online are just very involved in drama. And I'm, I'm 24. I, I don't have time for that anymore. Yeah, no. Like I have a life. You're 24. Yeah. I'm 30. It's like still, imagine. Like, still, <laughs> like the people who are chronically online, like always like uh -huh. heavily invested like in the fandom. I can just see the spiral happen yeah, online because they, sure. they're they're always there. They, mm -hmm. they post everything. They post their thoughts live. Mm -hmm. oh. And like sometimes in that case too, like they want to start the drama, you know, yeah. because like there's only so much that happens in the fandom, you know, like, yeah. but there's always, you know, things that happen. And exactly. usually it's the people that like are a hundred percent like living as it, you know, that kind of started. It's like the fandom is what you surround yourself with. If you're That's so true, yeah. you know, right? Like if you're constantly being a dog, you're not experiencing the real fandom, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or real life. So, yeah, yeah, or real life, yeah. yeah. So you know. Like a lot of it too, like you make those connections and you're not going out with your friends and always dressing up full <laughs> suit, going in public, you know, like you go out and like you enjoy like just life as it yeah. is like it's so it's like a good way to meet people but like you don't need to stay in that kind of persona like if you go out with like other friends in the community being a furry is nothing more than a kink yeah so i mean i'm not gonna sit here and say it doesn't exist because it does mm -hmm. but for me i just like to perform i just like to be a weird character and run around and say hi to people and it's make like people gremlin smile <laughs> yeah no i just like to make people laugh and yeah that's just that's what I do it for. I mean, I just think it's really fun to have an outlet outside of work. Life is too serious. In any situation where there's a fandom, anime conventions, furry conventions, horror conventions, and you're gonna find that part of it. And that's just human nature. Right. If you're, you're into that, all power to you. But personally, me, the idea of having sex in a $2,000 carpet doesn't- Or more, 22,000. That this doesn't seem fun to me. <laughs> Also, it's too, like you, a hassle. Sounds to like me. a yeah. huge stroke to me. Like, I paid so much money. I don't want to ruin my expensive fursuit, you know? Yeah. And for me, that was the main reason why I didn't want to tell people that I was part of the fandom because you tell someone, oh, you're a furry, and their initial reaction is like, oh, it's it's a sexual thing. It's a kink thing, you know? And I'm just like, no, I just like to dress up as a silly little dog <laughs> sometimes. That's all it is, you know? And to me, like, as long as you're two consenting adults, you do you, like, right. yeah. not my cup of tea. That's not what I joined the fandom for but like it happens but that is not 
at all the majority of the fandom. And because the majority of the fandom are kids too. Furries shouldn't be around kids. Okay. I don't think there's anything bad with it. It's just like having kids around drag queens. Like that's a big mm -hmm. thing right now. Yeah. Um, but usually there's like specific events for that. You know, there's like the reading and drag, right? And you have your kids go and a drag queen reads book. That's child friendly. There's a lot of panels at cons actually where it's like, oh, so you brought your kid to a furry convention and now you don't know what to do. Like that's literally yeah. the title yeah. of the panel. Yeah. It's very welcoming. Like you had mentioned before mm -hmm. to everybody and that includes kids and their parents even. Mm -hmm. The idea that kids shouldn't be around furries, ultimately that's that's your decision as a parent. Whatever. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to tell you, you have to let your kids near them. You know, <laughs> that's a little creepy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's a kid running up to me. I'm not going to be like, get away from me. <laughs> yeah. that, luckily, that's why there like, are rules in like yeah. dealer's den yeah. spaces. Yeah, absolutely. Where yeah. they'll tell you if it is like an 18 plus event or mm -hmm. if it's like, you know. Yeah. You need to get into a specific yeah. area. There are even so. some conventions like, you know, LVFC, mm -hmm. uh, where it's strictly adults, you know, yeah. that way there's no risk of that happening. So I think it's really great that a lot of our conventions are really on top of that. Protecting kids is like the most important thing. Why do you think that stigma exists? Why do you think that this is people's gut reaction? The CSI I mean, episode. I was just going to say that the CSI <laughs> episode. I mean, that's the first thing that comes to everyone's mind. There was a clip during a CSI episode, and that was literally the first glimpse into the furry fandom. And it showed- People in costumes. People in costumes, <laughs> getting it on, you know? And it was like, it blew up. People were like, oh my God, that's disgusting. Do they think they're animals, you know? And yeah. since then, everybody's just grabbed onto that and said, all right, that's it. And it, that could not be further from the truth. And like, like, cause even before I was in the fandom, like I saw that clip and I was like, whoa, what is this? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you know, scroll past it, block that page. <laughs> but of course there are artists in the fandom that do draw like kind of the NSFW type stuff. Like that does exist. And that's the stuff that gets cycled into like social media, like, you know, like the meme pages, you see people like using, you know, fetish art and things like that as memes. And that's the only introduction that a lot of people are getting is those right. pictures. And they're like, that's all they draw. Like, it's just all like fetish stuff. If you're interested in bringing your kid into this fandom, look some non-biased anti-CSI episode stuff up, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a safe fandom as long as you navigate it the right way. Right. <laughs> Furries have to come out. Um, I don't think people who are furries need to come out because it's just a hobby. I think that should be reserved for something that's more serious, like coming out as trans, coming out as gay, because like, as much as we can say like we've lost people in our lives from telling them that we're a furry, it's not the same as losing people in your life when you tell them that you're trans. I've had friends and family who've come out as trans and they're just totally cut off from family, friends, all that jazz. There is so much, I will say, hatred towards both, you know, queer spaces and furry spaces, but one is much more serious than the other. You're not gonna tell somebody, hey, I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I really like riding my bike. God, like, damn what? It, man. You know, oh. like, it, that's, that's a hobby. The furry fandom is such a safe space for queer individuals, for uh, LGBTQIA+. To have to compare coming out as a hobby, it almost feels wrong. It, it almost feels morally incorrect. Because when you say it that way, it almost sounds insulting. All furries are LGBTQ. There may be a smaller straight percentage, I guess, but I think a lot of people are in the fandom because they find it as an escape. That's what makes this space, this fandom so inviting, so welcoming, is that no matter what sexuality you are, everybody is so so welcoming. I feel like furries are the least judgmental people, you know, because we know what it's like, not to that extent, but you know, we know that like people will hate on us, you know, so we welcome each other in no matter what. And like, like personally, I'm straight and I've had people tell me like, there's no such thing as a straight furry, <laughs> like everybody, you know, whatever. Even then, like, it's such a welcoming and open community that no matter like what you identify as or who you find attractive, like you're gonna find people in the community who are gonna be like your found family for sure. Mm -hmm. Fur suits are cheap and easy to make. I've been making fur suits for, oh my gosh, maybe five, six years now. Oh, wow. wow. And you need so many supplies. Like yeah. it, it's not just the fabric 
that goes into it. Fabric is expens expensive. It's $25 a yard, if not more. But it's not just the fabric. It's you have the sewing machines, you have the 3D printers, it's the embroidery machines, shipping supply. It, it goes so far beyond than just what you need to make the thing. It's not just the materials. No, mm -hmm. not at all. And you know, it's, it's also the labor. It's the time. I've only been making fursuits for two months. I did not realize how much work goes into that mm -hmm. when I first started. And Working. halfway through, I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. You yeah. know? <laughs> but like when you start to see it come together, you're like, okay, this is worth it. People, especially outside the fandom, don't really realize the like how intense sometimes the suits can be with the features like removable eyelids or like removable LEDs. tongues, LEDs. LEDs. Like there's a lot that really goes into it. Like it's not just the head, like it's way more than that. So like the prices are gonna be high, especially if it's the suit makers who take extra time making sure every seam is so clean and that you don't see like hot glue dripping out, you know? Cause you've like, I've heard the stories of people getting suits and they're like, this is not what I paid for. Yeah. You know? So it's like, there's a lot that goes into it for sure. The cool thing is now is kids or young people in this fandom that can go and buy a uh, $20 Raptor mask at Target mm -hmm. and a little bit of fur, maybe some scrap fur from somebody and they can make their own head. They're finding newer ways mm -hmm. and cheaper ways to get into this fandom. And I think that's really cool to be inclusive of other people, yeah. you know? Especially for people who are, and like, you know, the younger furs who are coming into the fandom and seeing like, you know, all these like, you know, poppy furs with like their big, like nice digi grade suits. And they're like, <laughs> do I need that? And I'm like, no, like it's, you don't even need a tail or paws. Like it's just the community itself, you know, so. yeah. Can y'all expand on the drama in the furry community a little? Oh, oh wow. Uh, where do we start? <laughs> I guess a good thing to start with is what's happening recently with the multicolor bark auction that ended at $22,600 for just the head, good hands, and a tail. on them. So basically there was just this like pre-made character costume. It was like the mask, but they started an auction of this costume. It ended up going to $22,600 to an unknown bidder. They remained anonymous. People who were wanting a chance felt that they didn't have a chance with the already high price point. Right. And it's like, if you have a specific price point, cool. That's great. Go to a smaller artist. Fursuits are a luxury item. It's not a necessity. And so okay. when these people get upset, it's like, make your own. You mm -hmm. know, if, you're, if you really want one that bad, mm -hmm. There's plenty of tutorials online. Other makers are mad that it's not them getting exactly. the attention mm -hmm. and that money. Cause not it, me being everybody jealous. Needs, everybody needs <laughs> Right, money. I'd love to get yeah, that, right. that high. So, so <laughs> I, think, I think it's just jealousy all over on Absolutely. both ends. Yeah. yeah. Furries don't have jobs. I have a professional nine to five job. Like <laughs> my boyfriend Luke works um, for the government. There's a lot of like, we were talking about this earlier, like military. Mm -hmm. furry. Yeah, very well known furry cheese. They worked on the COVID vaccines. They yeah. are like such a high ranking individual like in science, which mm -hmm. is crazy to me, you know, and then they dress up like a Pine Martin on their weekends. Pilots too. Pilots? Yeah, lots of pilots. yeah. And lots of pilots and lots of IT. That's yeah. stressful. Right. And a lot of those like high paying jobs are high paying because they're stressful, you know, so yeah, it's an, an escape. escape. And that's, you know, that's how a lot of people find this fandom is they, they think, oh man, I can be fate, you know, quote unquote, faceless for a little mm -hmm. while. Yeah. And just run around and not have to worry about taxes or <laughs> my job or, you know, <laughs> I'm a dog, I don't pay taxes, you know. <laughs> it's good old fashioned fun. Yeah. And that's, I think what a lot of people are looking for, especially nowadays. And it, it's, it's really cool to meet so many people from so many different walks of life, especially during conventions. Furries want litter boxes to be in all schools. Was that even real? Was I mean, okay, <laughs> let's think of it like hypothetically too. Like if that really was a thing, if there were people who were like, I need to have a litter box <laughs> at my school. <laughs> I, I think, I, I think that just should just be denied like straight yeah, out from no. the like, I, I think that's no a little that. ridiculous. Like, yeah. I also like kind of feel like that might have come from the people who see those like kids who go to school wearing like tails or like ears and they're like, oh yeah, like joking about it. Like they need to have a litter box in there. And that's but, why when I first heard of it, I thought like this can't be real. Like there can't actually be like, you know, people asking for yeah. litter boxes. And I, think like, that, I think that's where the misconception came from yeah. though, is the janitors keeping kitty litter mm -hmm. or kitty litter-esque products to clean up biological hazard 
spills. And also physically, like, Saying how are you doing hurts. that? Like, how are you physically using a litter box? Like, it's so gross. That's uncomfortable. <laughs> Who's sending these questions? <laughs> Furries wish they were actually animals. There is a community that does relate to being an animal, like in a past life where they feel spiritually cl connected to being Therian. an animal. Therians, yeah. Yes. Sometimes Therians are furries, but not all furries are Therians. To me, it's like cosplay, you know? Like, I just want to dress up as my character because, like, she's near and dear to me, and that's all it really is. There's Therians and other kin, so they are in one section. And then furries are just people that dress up as animals. <laughs> Something that I used to explain it to my family when, because they were like, we don't really understand it. I told them, just imagine it's Halloween every day. <laughs> You know, you get to dress up as a character, you get to go around and meet other people, and then you put it away and you're done. You you know that there's a time and place for this. I'm, I dress up as an animal because I like performing. I like being weird. Yeah. Like, no, none of us think we're animals. <laughs> no, I think, no. All furries are neurodivergent. I remember at Anthrocon a couple of years ago, they did like this whole survey between all of the attendees, and it was it was all anonymous and you could put in like your information if you were on the spectrum. It's not everyone. Like, obviously, again, we've mentioned it before, people from all walks of life join this yeah. fandom. You, you never know anybody's story unless you sit down with them and talk to them like we are now. You know? totally. yeah. But even sitting here, I don't know your guys' stories. Yeah. Like, I still, like I, I could still learn so much about you guys. Even if our whole fandom was not, you know, neurotypical or what have you, who cares? You know, yeah. we're all yeah. just there to have fun. Mm -hmm. Like. We're such an accepting fandom and people are different. And mm -hmm. that's all that matters. Yeah. We're all still people, you know, and we're all still having a, a good time with the common interests. And it's like still that open like fandom, like even if you are, okay, cool, let's dress yeah. up as a dog together. Yeah. Like it's, it's yeah. you know, it's a safe space for a lot of people. Exactly. From all walks of life, like you said. Furries only date other furries. My partner now is also in the furry fandom. Before that, it wasn't really the same case. You know, I was dating somebody else, but like he knew that I was in the furry fandom. He was not. I didn't try to like get him into it. I was just like, this is my character. I just got out of a relationship mm -hmm. like two months ago and I was with him for six years. So oh, wow. since high wow. school. And uh, I didn't tell him about Rune and everything about being a furry until maybe the last few months of our relationship. Cause I, at that point had told like my best friend, I told my sister, but I couldn't tell him because him and the friend group that I was with were just completely against furries. <laughs> I try not break. to think that like he broke up with me because I was a furry. And I don't think that was the issue because he's like, okay, cool. And like, is that it? You know, so he didn't have an issue with it necessarily, but he went and told that group anyways and went and was like, hey, yeah, Anna's a furry, like, and, and I was upset, like, hurt by that, you know? So it's like, looking at it now, I'm like, if I do, you know, start dating at any point again soon, like, sure, like, I, I could find somebody in the fandom, and it would probably be easier at that point, you know, because I don't have to necessarily, like, be like, hey, so there's this thing I need to tell you. But at the same time, not everybody who's in the fandom and who's with a partner, their partner's not always in the fandom. I have been with my wife for 15 years. Wow. And... I was not a furry when I first met her, you know? <laughs> she was like, you know what? Go all in, let's go. You know, if this thing makes you happy, we're gonna do it. She's been incredibly supportive. We both weren't furry starting, but here we are now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or I've seen videos of people like telling their, their significant other like, yeah, I'm part of the fandom and they'll break up with them over it. And all the comments will just be like, that's something you need to say at the beginning. Like you need to tell people things like this. And I'm just like, it's not like I murdered someone. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> you know? it's like not that serious, you know? You know, if your significant other doesn't support you, there's always gonna be someone in the fandom that will because, yeah. you know, found family is a huge thing in this fandom. Okay, let's see y'all in your full fursuits. So I made everything but the head on this costume. I created this character, Jinx, in high school when I was like, maybe 16. And yeah, this is pretty much like me, how I wanted to see myself when I was in high school, just a happier individual. And I think Jinx brings that out in me. I love it. I, know, I so love good. like the purple so much. I'm Scout. I created my Sona, gosh, so long ago now. Even though I haven't been in the fandom for that long, I've always had like a, an animal character to represent me. She was the first character that I got a suit of. So she's very near and dear to my heart. And 
absolutely love, you know, orange, yellow, and blue put together, my favorite colors. Something that's really cool about her, I can't show you when she's on me. Her lining is all hamburgers and french fries because yeah, I worked ooh. at In-N-Out for five years that's and that was my whole personality, so. <laughs> This is Rune. She is, I guess, the version of me that I would want to be, like a lot of people's personas are. So she's like super badass, super, she's got the gauges. She's got the, I mean, I have my septum pierced too, but she's got the septum, you know, that she's like kind of the person that not only is gonna be fun to be around, but also like if you mess with her friends or anything, like she'll, she'll be on you pretty much. <laughs> I made my suit myself, every part of it. But some of the cool features I like about her is that her gauges are removable. Her septum is removable, so she has like a pickable nose, pickable nose. I like to put glow sticks in it because I think that's funny. My favorite part about her is the NFC tag in her nose. So if you put your phone on there, it'll automatically scan it and then my socials will pop up. So that's people so are cool. interested in commissions and whatnot. I'm like, just just boop the nose and, and you got it. Can I ask a weird question? Yeah, so can I pick your nose? Oh, you mean just, oh, okay, go ahead. Incredible. Yeah, you see how it, yeah, it goes through. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> see, and that's exactly what I meant about the features on suits. <laughs> is sometimes you pay more for suits because they have yeah. features like that. I've heard there are things like scalies. I mean, they're just furries with scales. I love to see when people have like the skull dogs or like, you know, like lizards, like the things that are like not like you don't see a lot in the fandom. I love to see when people make suits of those specifically. Me too. I'm actually in the middle of a uh, making and designing a pigeon sona. Oh. I have two pet pigeon, pigeons at home, so I wanted to make a pigeon suit. So you I'm really pet, excited to start working on that. <laughs> and I don't know about like a personality difference. I mean, I wouldn't say like, oh, all of the cats are assholes, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> Which I've heard people say is that right. some of the so species like, have it, like. It just depends certain... on the person, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's cool about fursuits is you can like design them to have different personalities. Yeah. So like. <gasps> oh yeah oh yeah i love that wide-eyed so you know uh so like you could like do things like that with like eyelids and stuff so i'll just keep them up for the rest of the interview <laughs> this face shapes so when people like the suit makers make them like shorter snouts or bigger smiles like it gives especially in the toonie suits in comparison to more realistic suits like so much expression and, and it really brings the characters to life for sure. It feels like y'all are so much more expressive and playful in your suits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like scared I'm gonna knock something over. I know, but, I'm like... But see how how different we're acting? It's because you can't see our faces. You so know, we have this to is something with our hands. That is considered a performance. This is basically why a lot of people put these suits on. You can be goofy, you can be silly. You don't have to worry about your face being shown, you know? Yeah. Scout, I wanted to ask you what it's like being a dog trainer and also dressing up like a dog. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm actually a dog trainer. Before my dog training, uh, I had to take a six week class. And a lot of that was studying like the psychology of dogs and how they're similar even to children. And honestly, that gave me such huge insight on like how dogs act. I feel like that gave me new appreciation for them. And that's really when I started to to feel like my other persona, Ranger, was a big part of me. Some of my coworkers back when I worked there, uh, they were really supportive of me being a furry. In fact, the person who trained me was just so excited and kept begging me to come in in my fursuit. Like, Aww. come on, you gotta come in with your costume. And I was like, no, no, I don't, I don't wanna do that, you know? I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't but, do that either. Yeah, <laughs> so like, you, you'd have but, to pay me a lot of money to be yeah. to get well, to that do that. separation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but it, it was it was cool that a lot of my coworkers were so super supportive. What's it like meeting other furries in the fur suits? Full honesty here, I haven't worn this costume in I think months. All the conventions I go to are like pretty much strictly to sell. But I'm, I'm sitting at a table all day, like talking to people, trying to make sales, make connections. By the time the den closes, I'm ready to go to the room and go to sleep. And I, I'm like done, so exhausted. I don't even. I went to Golden State and that was my first one at first, like me, if anything, you know, and I was really, really nervous because one, like I hadn't shown my face to anybody. And so I was like, hey guys, so if we take pictures like, and you post them, don't post my face because nobody knows about this. I went back home just, and I couldn't sleep because of how happy I was oh. because of the people that I met. Like, I just cannot express like how accepting and loving and how much fun the group I spent with, like the time at the con, like they were just so great. Like there was a moment we were sitting in like the headless lounge. We were like laying on the floor. We were just being like, so what do you do? Like, where are you from? You know, and it was just so 
genuine and like at that point like I was like you know not in the best headspace in life you know so it was just such a 180 turnaround to like being in this like community and like and also just seeing people's suits in person for the first time was just great too you know but just everybody was so so nice so welcoming and like I had a genuinely like one of the best times I've probably had in a long time oh sure. that's so sweet yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of on the same boat with you you mm -hmm. know going to these things, trying to sell stuff, you know, but for a lot of the conventions I've been to, I just, gosh, I just run around. Like there's <laughs> panels that you could go to, uh, you could host your own panels, you know, things like the dance comp and the, you know, people in, in full suits dancing their heart out, I think is such a fun thing to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, then, then, then there's the dealer's den where you can go and you could buy all sorts of merchandise that's handmade, custom made. It's just a wonderful like midway point to meet people. What is it about the fandom that brings you the most joy? For me, I just love creating, like especially costumes. That's what I wanna do. I mean, I studied costume production at, in college. Um, I had to make all of these like stage armor pieces. So like, I want to end up in film and you never know who you're going to meet in the furry fandom. Like there's some, some famous people who have fursuits and we, we like, we don't know until it's said. So just always making the connections and being able to do what I love. And that's sewing, making costumes, being creative. You know, I'm going to have to agree with you on that because there's so much creative freedom in this fandom. And, you know, as somebody who owns a small business, it's, it's not just fun it's it's also your income it's your job and i've had so many jobs before this you know i worked at disneyland i worked for in and out i had i have these high profile jobs but nothing has ever brought me as much fulfillment as working with furries i have a huge group of such close-knit friends that i honestly i don't think i don't know where i'd be without them and i owe that to the furry fandom for sure i like definitely agree with both of you like in the sense of like creating things like I've always loved to create things and it's like not only like suits or like digital art but like I 3D model like I'm majoring in graphic design you know like I just love to be able to not only put my work out there like because I'm like hey look at what I did but just being able to receive the feedback from people like if I draw their characters like just the praise like that that how excited and happy I can make someone is so fulfilling to me like I love to be able to bring people's characters to life and but also you know, like you said, like the community, like I do owe it definitely to my friends that I've made in this community. And like, we're constantly talking, you know, always having our little discord chats and sending memes. And it's just like, <laughs> even if we don't talk all the time, I know that if I need somebody to talk to, if I'm like, hey guys, I'm really stressed about this, that I'm gonna have people who have my back. And I'm, the majority of these people never met like in person, you know, like it's just that special. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.